Hey, and welcome back to breaking the heck out of this game. I'm going to teach you various ways you can cheat your new Breath of the Wild file to your advantage. Be warned, having all of these nice things relatively quickly will leave you longing for the things you won't know you've thrown away in the process. Understood? Let's go. Upon starting a new game, the very first thing we can do after grabbing the Sheikah Slate is to never let time start. You see, the game is stuck at 5.15am until we activate the intro cutscene and activate the tower. If we skip the intro cutscene, like most speedrunners do, it'll stay that way. I'd show you the fast way to clip out of bounds and skip it, but that's precise. Here's what to do. Grab the Sheikah Slate and press the right stick to open the scope for the first time just to get rid of the animation for the first time use. Go into the next room and push two of the boxes into this corner. One on top of the other, and the top one against the shrine wall. Get on top of the box and stand between it and the wall. Face the camera away from the wall, but face link towards it. Press the right stick to use the scope, and hopefully that should clip you through the shrine. Keep trying if not. Once you've succeeded, save while you're down here, because we're not done clipping through things yet. Next, we need to climb this snowy wall. Once you're near the surface, crouch down, wedge yourself up as high as you can into the spot, and then stand up. This may take a couple of tries as well. You might also freeze to death, but it's okay because you saved. Once done, just avoid the entrance to the Shrine of Resurrection, or else you'll activate the cutscene. Now, you're free from the shackles of time. You can't be bothered by those fickle night enemies or blood moons. Except for glitched blood moons, those might still happen. The only real issue with stopping time is that some quests become unavailable. But you can always go back to the Shrine of Resurrection and activate the cutscene to let time start moving if said quests become important to you. Before we can move on to the next thing, continue finishing the Great Plateau as normal. Once you've gotten your paraglider, head to the Taobab Grassland. We're gonna get ourselves a horse with the best stats available. One, because that's nice, and two, they can help out with a glitch later. You can glide down to there from the Stasis Shrine, but I'm gonna wind bomb there because I'm a level 73 epic gamer girl. That'd be a reference to my wind bomb tutorial if it didn't get corrupted. Once there, the spot we're looking for is where the giant horse spawns. And as great as the giant horse is, they're not what we want. We're interested in the smaller horses around it. This horse spawn area is one of two spots that can contain horses with the best stats available. These three stat presets respectively. You won't be able to tame these two without some stamina foods at the moment, but luckily the five speed horse only requires one wheel of stamina to tame if you can soothe it fast enough. Here's how you can guarantee catching one. Climb this hill and save your game. Reload the save and use your scope to look at the pack of horses. They always spawn in this arrangement, and each individual one almost always has the same stats preset. This horse in particular is most often the five speed horse, so let's aim for it. Glide down onto the horse we're aiming for. Upon landing on it, spam L to soothe it as fast as you can. If you could tame it with your one wheel of stamina, it only has three spurs, and it's heckin' fast, you got it. If not, just reload and try again. Once you got it, follow the path all the way to the Highland Stable where we can register it.
In the spirit of cheating, I wanted to name him after the Konami code, but that didn't fit, so I went with my other genius name. Also, if you've got the DLC, might as well go grab the Ancient Saddle too while we're nearby. Now your steed is fast as heck, and can teleport. But only if they love you. Before we can do our next set of glitches, we'll need a bit more progress. Specifically, we need to obtain the camera rune and a memory. Let's blow through that right quick. Whoa, nice cock. Anyway, back to progression. Seek out Impa, talk to her, pledge your life, skip that cutscene shit, activate the shrine before leaving, go to Hatano, activate the shrine, light this furnace, Pure is surprised, get camera, go back to Impa, show her the camera, memory spots ready to be remembered, fast travel to Magnesia shrine, glide down to the spot, get memory. Good. Now we're all caught up with where we need to be. Now I'm going to show you how to get the Master Sword early. We could use the apparatus glitch and get at least 13 hearts and then go grab the Master Sword, but I want to show you another fun way that requires no hearts. Ride your horse all the way into Korok Forest. or just summon it there if you can. Activate the shrine there just in case. Get on your horse, position it relatively near the Master Sword, and then save. Just to be safe, reload that save to make sure Link is on the horse upon reloading. Sometimes that's not the case, and it is required for Link to be on the horse when that save is reloaded under normal circumstances. We're going to reload the save under not normal circumstances, so this might be confusing later. Just know, we loaded the save normally, and Link is still on his horse, so we're good. Fast travel to the Hatano Shrine, Maya Magana. Equip your camera rune and a shield. Now we'll have to activate the camera glitch. To do so, hold ZL, Press L, and then immediately press left stick and X at the same time. If you did this correctly, you should be able to move freely while using the camera rune. Activate the apparatus pedestal while in this state, and delete the picture. Press plus to pause the game before the apparatus takes effect. Reload the save with you on your horse. If done right, you'll spawn beside your horse, and not on it. This is the confusing part because now this is what we want. Stay off your horse and fast travel to a faraway location, say Mayamagana again. Upon doing so, the game will instead place you where your horse is, only the area is quite unloaded. Once you can move, rush to the Master Sword and press A to pick it up. Yoink! There'll be no cinematic sequence, it's just yours now. Though it doesn't come with the extra slot. If you want that, you'll have to pull out this air, which will take 13 hearts to do. Now that you know of the way to yoink the Master Sword, let's go give ourselves full hearts and stamina anyway. There are plenty of tutorials on this already, so feel free to skip to this timestamp if you already know. One neat quirk about watching a memory during the apparatus glitch, unpausing and waiting at least two seconds, 
is that the current state of hearts and stamina when activated get transferred to the save you load. You can also transfer active buffs, and the side effects also include useless paraglider and elemental immunity, though all of these will be reset upon going through a loading screen. But I digress. Let's focus on abusing heart and stamina transference. Let's set things up by getting two available saves to reload, with a difference in amount of hearts or stamina. If you haven't yet, exchange your four spirit orbs for a heart container or a stamina vessel at the Statue of Hylia. There's one at the church-like building in Hateno if you need it. Next, find the horned statue. It's by the hill with the flag on it, next to the entrance to Hateno. Go through with its short quest where it takes an essence from you, talk to it again, and get your essence back. Then, save your game. Equip your camera rune and a shield, and head into Maya Magana Shrine, activating an autosave. Reload your save at the Horned Statue, sell all of your essence to it, and then manually save your game again. Now, we have two saves with a different amount of hearts. My manual save only has three hearts, with one essence stored, while my auto save has four hearts. Next, follow these steps, which we will be repeating. Step 1. Reload the auto save inside Maya Magana. Step 2. Perform the camera glitch. Hold ZL, press L, and then immediately press left stick and X at the same time. Step 3. Activate the apparatus pedestal while in this state, and delete the picture. Step 4. Press plus to pause the game before the apparatus takes effect. Step 5. Go to your adventure log and into the memories tab. View the one you have. It won't actually play. Step 6. Unpause and wait at least two seconds. Step 7. Pause again and reload your manual save at the statue. And step 8. Sell all of your essence to it and then manually save your game. Now, we should have two essence stored in the statue. We have a net gain! Let's do it again. Reload the autosave inside my Amagana, perform the camera glitch, activate the apparatus pedestal, immediately pause the game, view your memory, unpause and wait at least two seconds, reload your manual save at the statue, and sell all of your essence to it and then manually save your game. Now we have three essence stored. Let's make things go faster by redoing the setup before continuing. Buy back all the essence that you can, and then get a new autosave inside Maya Magana Shrine. If no autosave occurs upon entering, which is bound to happen at some point, go and open this chest to get one. Then, we go back to our steps. Reload the autosave inside my Amagana, we are already there so no need. Perform the camera glitch, activate the apparatus pedestal, immediately pause the game, view your memory, unpause and wait at least two seconds, reload your manual save at the statue, and then sell all of your essence to it, and then manually save your game. Now, we're selling three essence each time. If you keep repeating these steps and redoing the setup whenever you want to quicken the pace, you'll have enough essence for max hearts and stamina in no time. 
just one more thing. As you know, transferred stamina and hearts are temporary. If all you do is transfer them from one save to another and nothing else, they'll revert to normal after any loading screen. To solidify them, you just need to change your hearts and stamina once. So either add one more heart and stamina, or remove and add one if you're already at max. Then, they'll be permanent on your save file. Fantastic! You can now have up to max hearts and stamina with only four shrines completed. That won't take away motivation to keep playing the game. Now that we can, we might as well go get that extra slot for the Master Sword. What are you doing? You already have the sword. Link, stop it. This is weird. You're not even holding anything. If you have the DLC, you might want the fully upgraded Master Sword that the Trial of the Sword offers. You might not actually want to complete the Trial of the Sword though, so let's skip that as much as we can. I'm beginning to think that losing your memory isn't your only problem. Here's the plan. From the first floor of every trial, beginning, middle, and final, we are going to clip out and head to the final floor of the beginning trial. Defeat the Hinox there with this metal box. Which will then bring us to the Master Sword room. Let me explain how the Master Sword room works, to clear up some questions I know that would get asked. There is only ever one Master Sword present in this room. There's no point to flying up to the higher platforms. The thing that determines which Master Sword spawns in this room is what level you selected when entering the Trial of the Sword. For example, if you selected the Middle Trials, from that point on, no matter how you got to the Master Sword room, you'll always find the 50 attack Master Sword there. That's why we're always going to head to the final room of the beginning trials to get there, as it's the easiest to complete. We'll be relying heavily on shield clipping to accomplish this. I have an in-depth tutorial on it if you can survive my euphonious voice that turned out too much like ASMR. I won't be explaining much about it in this video, so if you find yourself confused, go watch that. I can't clip through this wall. My ski was fine. And it's as flat as Mipha's chest. Step 1. Shield surf into a west-facing slope for a westward skew. There's plenty of trees you can get it from if you're precise enough. But for the sake of consistency, let's use the nice slopes inside Keo Rug Shrine over here. They're just beyond the gate. The code is 5312 to open it. We'll be using one of these slopes that face west. Once you have your skew, enter the beginning trials. Grab the shield by the Bokoblins. And shield surf into this west facing wall, and then take your shield off immediately. 
After clipping through, head to B12, floor 12 of the beginning trials, the room surrounded by the water with the sleeping Hinox. Use Cryona's blocks to traverse the hill of water and stand on the strip of land. Aim the camera up so you can see, and then shield clip through. If you lost your skew, you can get a new one by creating a tilted Cryonis block and using it as a slope to get the appropriate facing skew. Grab this metal box in the corner. Approach the Hinox and wait for him to get up. Proceed to violate the Hague Conventions. This is much easier with motion controls, but it's possible without them. Just be careful not to swing the box hard enough to break it. Enter the next room and grab your 40 damage Master Sword. Great, we're one third of the way through. Now we have the middle trials available to us. We're going to do essentially the same thing, just with different scenery. Get a southward skew and head into the middle trials. Find the Bokoblin with the shield, then use bombs to persuade it out of their hands. Take the shield, then shield clip out through the south facing wall. If you've lost your skew, you can reobtain it with some nice box flipping. Or, if you have enough hearts, you can clip out the east facing wall with this alternative method. Slide down to B12 and clip through this side. Whack the Hinox and get your tasty 50 damage Master Sword. Now to do all of this just once more but with a lot more walking. Set another southward skew, unless you still have the previous one, and go into the final trials. Grab the shield from the stall coblin and clip through the wall you are facing upon entering. Dude. 
take this route all the way to B12, and then clip through the southern wall again. Whack the Hinox. And grab your fully upgraded Master Sword. And there you go! We've successfully rendered a big chunk of this game's content pointless. You'll find that your drive to complete shrines is almost completely gone. But don't get existential yet, we've still got more things to do. Join me for part two where I'll cover how to cheese equipment, rupees, Korok seeds, and the master cycle. <laughs>